And welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner here on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. Week 9 as we wrap up the regular season. There's only one week left in it. With me is Craig Williams from the Columbus Discoverers. Craig, thank you for stopping in. Hey, another great week. Glad to be here. Well, let's look forward to what you have as well as last week. you got one week left. You're playing Millard South, a team that potentially has a chance to make the playoffs should they win. Before we take a look at that, though, we're going to look back at the battle for the FNC Cup. You went up to Fremont. Unfortunately, you didn't come away with the win on that one, but just talk us through that game and kind of what happened Friday night. Well, you know, that was an emotional game for our kids, for our coaching staff. Um, you know, so much is put into uh, bringing that cup home and, and uh you know, it, we were going up against a Fremont team that uh, this week is playing for a, a, a playoff spot. And, um, you know, they're, they're a much improved team from last year. They had 20, or 20 returning starters from last year's football team that, uh, that was decent. And, you know, they came out in the first half. And, and in the first half, our defense, it took them a little while to find their, to find their footing, find their ground. And, and uh, when they did, they actually turned in the best defensive performance of the year. Um, you know, you have a touchdown like this that bounces off of our defender, bounces off their receiver, then goes five yards downfield and another kid catches it in stride and runs it in. And, you know, that's just kind of been kind of the, some of the things that have been happening to us this year. Uh, but our kids really came back. And the next drive, we drive down the field. Um, and right before halftime, it looks like we're going to score. And, and then we had uh, one of two uh, uh, big interceptions that ended up going back for touchdowns. And it, it changed a potential 13-7 to halftime game. Uh, moved it to a 20 to nothing halftime game, and, and uh, you know that was uh, that was tough going into halftime and, and uh, trying to regroup and, and come back out from that. Um, but you know our, our kids did a decent job coming out in the second half. Defense still playing well. Uh, we still moved the football on offense. We just couldn't seem to find the big play to punch it in the end zone. Well, you see a kicker turn here to start the third quarter, and you also had that blocked extra point. So a special team that seemed like you had a couple big plays as well. On, uh, on special teams, uh, we were very, very good. Probably our best special teams game of the year. You know, the punt uh, protection was very, very good. Um, our punt or our kickoff coverage was outstanding. Um, you know, we had the blocked uh, PAT, and our kickoff return game was was fantastic. So, um, you know, if you look at the special teams game, I, I think we won that phase of the game. Uh, I think it was a stalemate. Uh, you know, in that. Uh, in, 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 on the two defenses, but th their defense against our offense was the big difference. And, and that's unfortunate because we've been a team that hasn't turned the ball over this year. And for two of those to go against us like, in, in the way they did, um, that was tough for us to overcome. You're looking here towards the fourth quarter too. I mean, silver lining, you were completing passes and driving down the field again. Did you like what you saw in your air game um, offensively? You know, it, uh, it was a little bit better. Um, you know, I, I thought Fremont did a very good job of, uh, again, taking away our play action pass. It, and uh, you know, teams have uh, decided, especially when they got up 20 to nothing, 27 to nothing, they were just going to hang back. They were going to let us run the ball for four and five yards uh, a carry. They, they weren't going to give up the big one and let us get back in the game. And, and uh, you got to credit their coaches for being patient on defense because it's tough to do that when teams are churning out five yards a carry to just say you can have those five yards. Uh, you know, you got a lot more points to score, but uh, but they did it, and uh, you know we we churn out uh, three or four plays of five yards, but knew we had to get going in a hurry, so uh, we took our shots, and and they were sitting back there waiting for them, so they they just really never gave us that opening to get back in the football game. Well, I'm looking forward now to Miller and South, the final game of the regular season. Still looking for that win. What do you preach to your kids at practice? You know, you're going into this final game. Are you going for the moral victory of, hey, let's, let's grab one. You're playing another, a tough team that's, again, motivated because they have that chance to make the playoffs with a win, a situation you guys were in last year at this time. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, they are a good football team, and they've really been playing well lately. Um, you know, we talked to our kids, and I, and I think our kids are really buying it, um, that uh, this last week we're going to go out and have a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun in practice. Um, you know, some of these uh, seniors realize that it's going to be their last time putting on the, putting on the helmet, putting on the pads, and pulling the jersey on. Um, and uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we get to coach a great group of kids, and, and we get to coach this great game of football. So the coaches have been outstanding. The kids realize that they're playing the best team sport in the world, and uh, they get to go out and for one more week. Uh, be a part of that, those seniors, and then uh, and the underclassmen understand that it's going to be nine months before you get a chance to do it again. So we're trying to enjoy every moment of it, um, you know, and uh, and focus on uh, putting together a game plan against Millard South that uh, we can go out and be competitive. And speaking about Millard South, what's the scouting report on them? What do they bring? You know, they got a quarterback that's uh, very athletic. 
Um, you know, they do a lot of read option, um, a lot of zone read option, and uh, he, he's uh, efficient in the pass game, but he's not a passing quarterback. He likes to run and, and move with his feet. So um, we've got to look at, uh, we've got to have somebody on him all the time, whether it's pass or run. Uh, we've got to make sure we've got uh, assignments uh, down and, and somebody's taking care of the quarterback. But their running backs are also outstanding. They're big up front, um, you know, and defensively, they actually got a big transfer in from uh, Fremont that was outstanding for them last year and, and a big D lineman. Um, they're big up front on defense, and, and their defense is uh, very similar to Fremont's. Um, you know, we didn't put up any points against Fremont, but we felt like we could move the ball against Fremont. We just didn't finish those drives. So um, uh, very similar scheme-wise as, as Fremont as well. So, um, you know, a lot of what we did last week was we could carry over to this week, and, and we got to tweak a few things that didn't work so well. But, um, you know, we're excited about uh, the game plan that we have in, and, and um, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. You definitely played to your advantage, as you said, that you sort of saw the similarities between Fremont. Um, is there anything else you're playing up in practice besides the have fun mentality? And we kind of seen this last week as you prepare for this final game. Well, you know, it's uh, you, you just give the seniors the opportunity to stand up and talk and, and uh, really be seniors this last week. Um, you know, we take a we take time out during practice for different seniors and all the seniors have the opportunity to stand up and tell, tell the team what football's meant to them and what the program's meant to them and what they've taken from it. And uh, you know, it's outstanding to hear some of those kids that uh, all the lessons you try to teach them uh, off the field and, and, and uh, going forward in life, how some of them have picked up on them and, and uh, some of the things that they've taken away from football, you know, kind of, you don't realize um, you know, until you hear it from them, uh, the things that they've actually gained from it. All right, Coach. Well, as always, for you, for the seniors, and for Columbus, wishing you the best of luck as you go up to Millard South on Friday night. All right. Thank you. And that wraps up this first segment of Coach's Corner here on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. Stay with us, though. We'll be back for our second segment with Lakeview Head Coach Kurt Frenzen. And welcome back to Coach's Corner here on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. Our Week 9 edition here for our second segment is Lakeview Head Coach Kurt Frenzen coming off a win and preparing for Rivalry Week with the Shamrocks. Coach, how are you doing? Uh, doing an excellent. Uh, great time of year. You know, we're at the end of the season here. There's a lot on the line, uh, not only district-wise, but also a lot of playoff implications. So a uh, big week for us prep-wise, and uh, kids are ready to get out on the field and get going. Playoff hope still alive. You're going to need a week or a win this week on Friday against the Shamrocks to keep them alive. Before we get into that, though, we'll look back at last Friday where you played David City and you got that win, which has allowed you to be in the position you're in at four and four on the on the year. Yeah, we're excited to get that win against David City. It always plays really tough, and it's a team that comes in and uh, does an excellent job prepping for us. And and uh, when they get out on the field, they usually play downhill and are really physical. Uh, Jack Reed really got the game going for us with that block punt, and then we were able to get our offense on the field and do some good things. Trey Shanks with a nice run there. Uh, we just did a good job of probably mixing it up a little bit more. And Nick Dolezal had a nice job, uh, did a nice job receiving for us the other night. And then one big run for us the other night was Jordan Jansen. Uh, he had a, a, one of his smaller runs there, but just did an excellent job later on in the game, breaking one off. And uh, again, with Nick uh, doing a good job there as well. Trent Roth with the touchdown here to make it 14 to nothing, did a great job cutting back on the toss play. And really excited about what he did for us. Uh, David City uh, had a nice couple plays against us uh, in the first half. And, uh, you know, we were moving the ball well, but there was a couple plays that we'd given up. And one was just this little um, fullback dive that they ran right up the middle on us. Uh, the right back's a little shifty and got to the second, third level and made us pay. But then we were able to answer right back with Jordan Jansen uh, on this 50-plus uh, yard dry, uh, run for us. So uh, just a great job of him getting the open field and doing the rest. And our line up front, I thought, did a nice job getting him some space as well. Uh, and again, and we were at the end of the half. We were trying to maybe make, make something happen. Uh, DJ did a nice job reading the safety. The only thing is that the outside backer dropped and picked it off, but we avoided that big uh, catastrophe there and got out of half with not giving up a score. But David City came out, fired up, ready to go. Uh, in the second half, which we knew they would, and they would score early. But then again, we were able to get our offense back on the field, and I thought uh, we did a nice job answering that. We needed a score, we came down and got the, got a score with DJ there. Uh, and then moving on later in the game, just a nice job again by DJ reading the safety, uh, getting the ball to Austin Fultz, and he did the rest. And just a great view coming into that end zone camera there. 
And as we get going here at the end of the game, we needed some big stops. And Austin Colts had two big stops in, this, uh, in their backfield uh, late in the game uh, to keep that momentum going for us. And then we were able just to run the ball and, and do some great things on the ground, which kept the ball out of their offense's hands. So, uh, you know, 42-19 is a score that uh, is pretty uh, indicative of the night as a whole. I thought offensively we did some really nice things. We had 550 yards of offense. And, uh, but in the same respect, we had some moments where we weren't very crisp and, and clean. So uh, as good as our offense looked at times, we did put the ball on the ground a few times. And then defense, we did give up 19 points uh, and 200 and some yards. But uh, the bulk of that yardage came on about three plays. So take those three plays away and uh, the stats look a lot better and the score looks a lot better for us anyway. No secret who's next on the schedule. SCOTUS, the final game to wrap up the regular season, a game I'm assuming you guys always have circled coming into fall. So what's practice been like? Let's just get right into it. It's the rivalry, the significance of it, and what you're expecting Friday night as you prepare for this big game tomorrow. Well, we're expecting a, a, a big physical football game, and that's that way every year, and that dates back. You know, I've been a part of this game now for 15 years, and every year it's uh, the same story. Uh, you know, basically both teams are going to come in. Uh, they want to have bragging rights for a year, and, and uh, your upperclassmen want to leave on a high note with this game. Uh, you know, and only one time in that 15 years we end up playing each other twice, and that was in 2013. We played them last, uh, last game of the regular season, then turned around and played them again that next week. And, and so outside of that, you know, it's one, um, outside of that year, it's a one-shot deal uh, per year, and you get one chance to come out and play your best football against them, and you want to make sure you do that. Uh, again, uh, you, you, it's your rival. It's a, a thing where you're going to see those uh, kids, those coaches, those parents, and those uh, players around town. And, and you want to make sure that uh, when you go around, you can hold your head up high and, and make sure that you put your best effort on on the field. And, and when you do that, uh, usually good things happen in this game. And, and I know our kids are up for it, and I know their kids are going to be up for it as well. And not that you need any more reason to get up for this game, it's a rivalry, but you have the playoff implications. You need to win and some other dominoes to fall your way to keep your playoff hopes alive. And not only that, but you also have the chance to spoil their district championship hopes if they win the game against you. You can cancel that out. Are you, are you playing that up as well? Or are you just saying, hey, let's worry about what's in front of us, which is we need to win for our own sake? Well, we have so many things that uh, we got to worry about as far as assignments on defense, so many things that we got to worry about assignments on offense. And especially, so to be honest with you, you know, our kids know, we talked about it on Monday as far as the playoff implications. Uh, you know, we told them basically, you know, I can't guarantee we're going to get in with a win, but I guarantee we're going to be out if we lose. Uh, and that's about it as far as we've kind of, you know, talked about it. And uh, so, you know, playoff-wise, and the district championship, obviously, uh, for them is on the line. Uh, they're going to have to get a win against us to get that championship. Um, and then with that being said, uh, you know, we can get in there and get a victory. Their chances are, are gone. Uh, and so, you know, those are things our kids are aware of, but we haven't spent a lot of time talking about it. Uh, they have enough threats on offense, enough, enough, enough big players, uh, big plays on defense that they can make that we need to worry about uh, taking care of those things, the X and O part of it. And our kids are going to be jacked up for it anyway. They're going to be hyped up. So. Uh, that's not necessarily a concern. The concern is in making sure we come out and we're focused on what we need to get done. And, and I think if we can do that, uh, we're going to be in good shape in the fourth quarter. And speaking of the Shamrocks and the Crosstown rival, you know they're fast, they're athletic, um, they like to blitz on defense. Anything else you see, just scouting or wise, how do you view the Shamrocks and what do you need to do to come out with a win? Well, I, they play with very good effort. I think that's one of the things that stand out on film. And we, SCOTUS has played a very good schedule this year. We feel like we played a very good schedule this year. Uh, one of the things about it uh, is when you play tough schedules like we have and like they have, uh, you're prepared for games like this. I know they're prepared and I feel like we're prepared as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing about it is, their effort level uh, on film stands out, but we've seen that uh, across the board as well in those top teams that we play. You know, we've uh, our four losses have came against those top-ranked teams in the state, uh, along with where they're at as well in the rankings. So uh, we just need to make sure that we bring our best effort to that game, and and I think if we can focus on that, and then along with our assignments and those type of deals, again, we're going to be in good shape. 
All right, Coach. Well, thank you for stopping in. We're going to be calling this game on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. So just for my sake, I'm, I can't wait for Friday night, open for a very good game. Well, this game has provided a lot of great memories over the years. And, you know, I think back in all the games that we've been a part of and, uh, you know, we've been fortunate over the last uh, how many years to come on the right side of this thing. But leading up to, you know, the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, they kind of had our number and were kind of doing things uh, in a way that was keeping us uh, on the wrong side of it. But again, uh, whether we walked away on the right side or the wrong side of this game, the one thing you can always say is the kids play extremely hard, uh, play with great effort and heart. And if you're somebody out there, if you're not going to be at the game, you need to watch the game on uh, Columbus News Team because it's one you don't want to miss. Well, thank you as always, Coach Kurt Friends. And Lakeview Vikings taking on the Columbus Coda Shamrocks Crosstown Rivalry. Be sure to tune in to ColumbusNewsTeam.com if you're not there to watch it. We'll be live streaming it for you as well. Well, stay with us here on Coach's Corner because we're going to be hearing from the other side and head coach Tyler Linder with the Shamrocks right after this. And welcome back to Coach's Corner here on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. Our third and final segment with the head coach of the Columbus Go to Shamrocks and Coach Tyler Linder to prepare for a big week, rivalry week against the Vikings. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you. Well, before we get into the rivalry week and all the fun that comes along with it, we'll talk to you about last week, Friday. You went to or hosted North Bend Central. Coming off a loss against Wahoo, you said, you know, it really gave us a chance to get refocused and sort of resharpen ourselves and Looking at the highlights, that definitely appears that that was the case. You handled them fairly easily. Yeah, we uh, we came out. We executed a great game plan against uh, against North Bend. I think our coaching staff really stepped up their game, um, and I think our kids responded well after the loss of Wahoo. So we we came out firing right away. Um, you know, I saw some great things from our offense. You know, we were clicking on all cylinders. Some guys had had some great stats all night. Um, I think our offensive line controlled the line of scrimmage, and uh, and I saw great things in our defense too. You know, we uh, we went into the to to halftime after playing our starters the whole first half, and we were up 49 to or sorry 42 to nothing at halftime and so I'm um, really comfortable and excited about where we were at halftime and so you know we talked as a coaching staff how can we get some guys in uh, in the mix um, in the second half and and our second string guys really played the, the vast majority of the second half and it really looked like you just pretty much went straight ground and pound I think there might have been one pass in that first half um, put up 14 points in that first quarter and then you put up up to 42 so you had four more touchdowns in that second just all on the ground yeah, we, uh, we don't make any you know, any excuses about you know our passing game. I think we're efficient in it, but if we don't need to, you know, if we don't need to, you know, throw the ball through the air, we'll run it on the ground. And so our guys are really well versed in our run game. Um, and when you get a when you get a pretty big lead on a team, you start throwing around. It's not really the classiest thing to do. And so so we try to keep it on the ground and just work on our little things, our ball handling and security. And and, and I think that paid off uh, on Friday. And no surprise, the guys who got those scores of those 42 points in that first half. You had Harrington with three, as well as Helster and Boss also adding to that total. Yeah, guys that are very consistent with a rock in their hands. You know, they, uh, they're very explosive athletes, all three of the guys that you listed. But, you know, nobody scores touchdowns if, if you don't have ten other guys working their tails off for you. So, really happy with the team win on Friday night. So, individual accolades aside, I'm really happy with where our team is going into to Lakeview Week. And pretty much with the 42 nothing score at half, you had it wrapped up, so a chance for a lot of backup players to get in and play that second half where it was a 49-10. to So you did score with some of the backups. You had a nice pass, and then you had a, a touchdown run at the yeah, end. Yeah, I was, I was really excited for some of our younger guys to get in there. I think our, our second string line would be a starting line for a lot of C, C1 schools. And so really happy with the way that those guys gelled together um, and really happy with our quarterback play. You know, Nate, uh, Nathan Donahue went in there and uh, – man of that offense and did some really nice things um, but you know we he threw a nice ball which Tate Cannon went up and and really stole it away I mean I it, it'll count as a reception but it almost looked like an interception and then Tate just you know made an aggressive play on the ball and ripped it out at the last minute and so we were able to to kind of drive down and we ended up going for it on fourth down I mean we were kind of no man's land and so we, we ran a um, one of our counter plays in and, and Chase Newman squeaked through just this tiny little gap and was able to scamper in for another score. So, so very excited about those, those second string guys and, and, I, and I'm really excited that they get that opportunity. And a great chance for you guys basically to get back to sharpness, I guess if you'd say, because you have 
Lakeview, I mean, no secret here, a game you always have circled on the schedule. It's the last game of the season, of the regular season, and they have some things to play for. They're 4-4. Four and four. They have to beat you guys for a chance to make the playoffs if other things fall their way, and, I mean, that's just added on top of you shouldn't have anything else that needs to get you up for a game against SCOTUS from their perspective. So, I mean, everything else aside, it's Lakeview week. What's it been like in practice as you get ready for this final regular season game? Yeah, we, we talked to our kids early on in the week, and we said that there will be a lot of buzz around not just your football team, but the city with this game. Um, but there's also a lot of other things that hang in the balance, right? There's, there's playoff seating. There's a playoff berth possible for Lakeview. And so, you know, people will already be talking about, hey, who are you going to play first round? And and I kind of made a joke to even some of my the guys on my staff who were talking like, well, we could play this team or we could play that team. And I said, well, what happens if we lose on Friday night? And they're like, well, that, you know, but we can't look ahead. We've got to we've got to prepare for a very well coached uh, Lakeview team. You know, Coach Frenzen is going to have those boys ready to go. Um, and they're they've gotten better each and every week. It's 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 actually pretty impressive you know we've got some tape of their earlier games and you know they made some mistakes late in ball games but they've they've played really clean football the last couple of weeks and and played really close with some very good competition so i'm i'm really excited for the opportunity this is a rivalry so it kind of you know you can throw records out the window it's a, it's going to be kind of a no holds barred winner take all type of deal so um lakeview is going to come and, and we've got to bring our you know bring our A game if we're going to hope to pull out a victory against Lakeview. And you, you're head coaching now for your second year. You've been on this coaching staff for five, so you're getting used to what this rivalry is all about. What does it mean to you? And as the players, you know, you have that crosstown rival, and it's a smaller town, but you still have two schools that are rivals, and they play each other year in, year out. You know, rivalries are great, but the, the thing that I enjoy most about it is that it exists. You know, I come from a town where we didn't have a crosstown rival or even like a cross-county rival. We just... We didn't have a lot of tradition in, in, in big games like that. And so, you know, when I first got here, that was, that was really impressive to me that, that an entire town rallies around two teams, you know, to, on one night. And so there is, there is a lot of bragging rights at stake. There is a lot of uh, emotion tied up in it. And that's, that's what football is. Football is a game that teaches you a lot about life, but it's an emotional battle. Um, and so that's what it will be on Friday night. And I'm, I'm hoping that our kids appreciate it. I'm sure they do. Um, but they'll look back on, on this game and they'll remember all of those emotional feelings. So really, you know, I, I use the word excited a ton, but that's honestly how I feel. I love playing, especially under our, you know, uh, you know under the lights at our field. So it's, it's a home game for us. You're playing your rival. There's, there's really not much better. Well, if you're not excited as the head coach or a player, I mean, you need to check your pulse, as they say. So that's a good thing, I would, I would assume. Um, looking forward, you know, just the Vikings, you know who they are, what kind of players they have. But what's sort of the scouting report? How are you preparing for them and what do you see from them? I think they've got a lot of talent. You know, they're, they're big up front. They're aggressive up front. And they've got skill guys that can do good things with the football. So they're going to try to they're going to try to keep us, you know, keep us a little bit soft with with uh, um, with some of their passing routes, they're going to try to probably stress a vertical passing game and then run option underneath. And and uh, I take great pride as a defensive coordinator in trying to stop the option. You know that's what we're well, you know we've focused on this week is you know you know knowing our responsibilities and and, and doing your job um, on any given play. And so we've got a few wrinkles to throw at Lakeview that I'm excited to kind of unveil on Friday night. And so. Um, you know, we just have to match up with our athletes and go out there and just play football. I think that's, you know, you can, you can uh, read, it, read a lot of things in the paper, you can watch this, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's one team versus the other team on a Friday night, and, and you know, the best team's going to come out on top. All right, just wrapping this thing up, definitely a secondary side note to this game, but something kind of cool that's happening at halftime, SCOTUS is being presented a golden football from the NFL because they have a player that was on a Super Bowl roster. Yeah, um, Joe uh, Joe Blaha is uh, is a is a Scotus alum who played in the Super Bowl, and it's the it's the you know 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl, and so the NFL is doing kind of a great thing. If you have ever played in a Super Bowl, they're presenting your high school team um, with kind of a commemorative trophy in a way, and so um, Joe will be uh, in a, in attendance on Friday night, and and I'm really I'm. I'm really looking forward to, to talking with him before the game, and, and I'm really proud um, not only of Joe and his accomplishments, but, but just of the SCOTUS community. It's a, it's a great thing, and 
it's going to go right in one of our main trophy cases in the building. And so it'll be something that all of our kids can look look to, and not only to that you know to that trophy, but also they can look on all of our record boards and they can still see that guy's name. Those records still stand, and it's because they're really good records. He was a phenomenal athlete and a wonderful man, and so I'm really excited for Joe and for the SCOTUS community on Friday night. All right, Coach. Well, us at the Columbus News team also excited. We'll be broadcasting this one. If you're not at the game, people can watch it online, and it, it should be a great one to end out the regular season. So, as always, hoping for a good one. Yeah, me too. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Coach's Corner here on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. He's Coach Tyler Linder. The Shamrocks and the Lakeview Vikings clash on Friday night. You can watch it on ColumbusNewsTeam.com. I'm Brandon Axman, and that wraps up this week's show. <laughs>